Hi, my name is Rory Brown. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the Postman application for your Chrome browser. What Postman does is it allows you to interact with RESTful APIs. So today we're going to look at the Twitter API and we're going to send some data to Twitter. We're going to retrieve some data from Twitter. So we're going to use uh, get and post and perhaps put and delete as well. So the first thing we're going to do is log into Twitter and we're going to go to apps.twitter.com okay so in this Twitter account that I've created I don't currently have any Twitter apps so I'm going to create a new app the application details I'm just going to call it the I earn postman app test app for demo purposes I'm going to just try my own website here. Accept the Twitter TNCs and create my Twitter application. Okay, so you can see here my Iron Postman app has been created. First thing I'm going to do is change the access level because we want to read and write. So I'm going to update the settings. Now I'm going to take a look at the API keys. We're going to need these keys to connect to Twitter and send statuses and read statuses. Because I've just changed the app permissions, I'm going to regenerate the API keys. I find with the Twitter API, if you don't regenerate the API keys after changing permissions, you can sometimes have problems. So we'll just do that quickly. And I'm going to create access tokens to allow me to access the Twitter API. So essentially the uh, API key and the API secret are giving me permissions to the Twitter API. They're given my application permissions to the Twitter API. And the access tokens are more specifically giving my application access to my Twitter account so as I can update a status and read statuses. Okay, so I have an application created. I now have access to the Twitter API. So I'm going to open up Postman for Chrome. If you don't have Postman for Chrome, just do a Google search for Postman for Chrome and install it to your apps in Chrome. It only takes a couple of minutes. So if we click on Postman, you can see that it opens up a nice tidy looking interface. Okay. I want to access the Twitter API. I know that the Twitter API uses OpenAuth 1.0. So I'm going to click in there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these details in from the Twitter app settings page. So first of all, our API key. Which is called the consumer key in Postman. Then our API secret, which you should not reveal to anyone, least of all on YouTube. Then our token, which is the access token. And our token secret. I'm going to ask Postman to add these parameters to the header of our request to the API. So instead of adding them in as parameters to the URL string, they'll be added as headers to the request. I'll refresh that request. Now it's asking me to enter a URL, so I'm going to enter the Twitter API URL. And the best thing we can do now is go to dev.twitter.com. Get 
get started with the platform and let's go to the API resource documentation we're going to use version 1.1 And let's just get the user's timeline. Okay, so this is giving us the URL to retrieve the user's timeline. So we're going to pop that into Postman. We're also going to add at least one parameter because it says here always specify either an user ID or screen name when requesting a user timeline. So we'll use screen name. which is I earn ballroom now if we hit send it's telling us we've bad authentication data so let's have a quick look and see what we've done wrong okay I can see looking at postman here that it's generated a nonce that's six characters long I just happen to know that Twitter needs a 32 character nonce so let's drop a longer nonce in here and we'll press send okay so you can see what's happened here is that it's pulled back details of my Twitter timeline so you can see there that there are tweets the first tweet was created Saturday March the 29th at 14.08 you can see the ID of that tweet you can see the content of the tweet, so I retweeted a tweet from Vinnie Quinn. And you can see details of the user and other details about that tweet. And if we go further down, you can see previous tweets from earlier on. These are all in a JSON format. And we can consume those in our iPhone or Android application or our website or wherever we want. And display them, work with them, retweet them, whatever we feel like. So that's how we retrieve from the Twitter API using Postman. Okay, so we looked at using Postman to do a GET request, which was to retrieve a user's stream of tweets. We're going to use it now to do a POST request. So we're going to POST a tweet to Twitter. Okay, so let's quickly check our Iron Postman app, the API key, API secret, access token and access token secret are all still in Postman so that all looks good uh, the one here of course we have our six digit nonce again let's change that to 32 so 6, 12, 18, 24, 30 and 2 if we look at the rest API we're looking to post so the first post I see is to destroy a status the second post looks a little bit more interesting to create a status or to tweet essentially okay so let's click on that okay we can see the resource URL here which we're going to drop into postman right about here and we can see that we need at least one parameter a required parameter called status and that status is essentially your tweet so status tweeting tweetings from postman now of course we have to change our get to a post now we refresh the request to add the open out data to our headers add params to header so we'll refresh that and we will now press send and with a bit of luck we have just created a tweet tweetings from postman so if we go back to twitter look at our twitter stream and refresh we see that there's a new post 15 seconds ago tweetings from postman so that's how you use the Postman app to do a post to your RESTful API. So what else can you do with Postman? Uh, a couple of things I've found handy is creating collections. So for example, an API I'm working on related to cars, I have collections uh, so I can get a make. So I can get a particular car from the API. 
So you can see this is a car I obviously created as a test car at some point. This is only a test API. So this car has a name of new name. If we change to make 21 perhaps and click send, you can see we have Mazda. Uh, we can post to the API. So let's create a new car called Auto Hope. Press send. So that's telling us we've created a new car make called Auto Hope with an ID of 55. So if we get that from the API, there it is. So a collection is basically just it's a bunch of pre-saved calls to the API that you can use for testing or generally playing around with your API. Uh, in Postman as well, you've open R2, basic authentication, and digest authentication. So you can connect to almost any API with Postman. You've also a history of every call you've made to various APIs. That history will go on for hundreds and hundreds of entries if you allow it. And something which I haven't looked at in too much detail with Postman, but it looks pretty handy, you can share your collections. So you can actually send other developers uh, um, a link to your collection of API calls, which means if somebody is having difficulty using your API, you can actually say, well hang on, there's a lot of API calls, why not try these?